Hey friends, um, we're going to talk about the pen tool today. Um, I'm going to show you how to use the pen tool. I'm going to show you all the different things that you can do with the pen tool. Um, and hopefully you will have some time to work with it. So um, what you're going to do is you're just going to watch this video. Um, there are certain things that I'd like you to stop and do. So also hope have open illustrator and you can pause the video if you need to so that you can kind of follow along and then restart whenever you're ready um, so we're gonna work with the pen tool the pen tool is a really powerful tool that allows you to basically trace anything that you want um, this can be really great if you have um, a logo that you want to retrace um, if you have just like a silhouette or something like that maybe you're creating a logo and you want the shape of a leaf and um, you can take a picture of a leaf and then bring it into Illustrator and trace it with the pen tool um, I've used this with clients who have asked me to do something where they're being sponsored by other businesses and when that happens um, Sometimes they'll send a lo logo that is low resolution or isn't big enough for the t-shirt or billboard or wherever it needs to be. And they don't necessarily always have the original illustrator file or um, the vector file. So um, sometimes you end up having to like retrace um, that sort of thing. Obviously you always have to be careful of copyright issues. Um, so keep that in mind as well. All right, so our pen tool is the one over on the toolbar that looks like an old fountain pen. Um, when you click on it, you'll see that there are a couple other variations of this tool. There's an add anchor point tool, a delete anchor point tool, and the anchor point tool. We're going to talk about all four of those tools. Um, but starting with the pen tool, basically, just like I talked about previously, um, every shape in Illustrator is made up of points and paths. And so when you're using the pen tool, you're creating these points and then connecting them to one another um, to create a path. So if I click one time, um, what's going to happen is it's going to lay down a point and you'll see a kind of predictive line um, showing where that line is going to go from point A to point B. I'm just going to take a step back, which is command Z. You'll see my key commands down at the bottom of the screen. Um, so what I want to show you is this tool kind of communicates with you. And what I mean by that is that it shows you these little icons um, down at the bottom of the tool to kind of give you prompts as to what is going to happen. So in this case, you're going to see this asterisk symbol. And what that means is that the tool is not connected to anything and it's ready to create a new shape. So when I click, this asterisk disappears. All right, and then I click on my first point. Now I'm gonna click on my second point. I'm gonna click on a third point. And when I get back to my original first point, you'll see a little circle. And what that means is, is that it's going to close your path. Okay, so when we're creating um, vector graphics, we have two types of paths. We have closed paths and we have open paths. Our closed paths are shapes, which makes it really easy to fill them with color. And our open paths are lines. Um, which means that our fill would be a little bit wonky if we tried to fill it. So this is important to know, especially when you're creating certain graphics. So now when I click on that original first point, what happens is that my um, cursor is no longer attached to the shape. You can see that there's not that predictive line anymore. And my shape is a closed um, shape. It's a closed path. So um, you can see that my shape, at least this one anchor point, is selected. Um, and in order to further um, change this graphic, we want to make sure it's selected. So you can either select it with the black arrow, um, which is our selection tool, or we can also select it with the direct selection tool um, and click on it. And you'll see that all those points are filled in solid, which means that they're selected. So now when I select the pen tool and have my shape selected, um, when I roll over these paths that are the connecting the two points, um, what you'll see is a plus sign. Okay. And if you remember, when we clicked on the pen tool originally, we actually saw that symbol right here add anchor point. So what that's doing is it's allowing us to add an anchor point anywhere on our path um, within our um, shape. 
So I've just added a bunch of points. Now, um, if you've watched any of the other videos that I've had or know anything about Illustrator, we know that our direct selection tool, which is that white arrow, allows us to move individual points. So I can click on an individual point, I can move it, and that allows me to alter the shape. Um, so you can always add points wherever you want and then alter your shape with that. Um, and then if we go back to the pen tool again and we ro roll over those um, anchor points that are already created, what you'll see is a minus sign. And this will again reference back to when we clicked on the pen tool originally and you'll see delete anchor point tool. What that means is, is that we are deleting anchor points from our shape. When you delete an anchor point from the shape, what it does is it gets rid of that anchor point and it just connects the two um, anchor points outside of that anchor point. Now this is important is to know is when you are deleting an anchor point or subtracting an anchor point, um, you are not taking the shape from a closed shape to an open shape. However, if I were to select an anchor point with my white arrow and actually hit backspace or delete on the keyboard, that is taking me from a closed path to an open path. So now from a shape to a line. Um, so this is the difference between using the, the pen tool to delete an anchor point and actually deleting it with the white arrow and the backspace on your keyboard. I'm going to just back up Command Z or Control Z depending on whether you're on a PC or a Mac um, and go back to that um, minus to subtract anchor point. All right. Um, so basically what we have here is the ability to really adjust our line. Now just a quick key command is that if you press um, command or control on your keyboard um, while you're using the pen tool, that's going to give you that white arrow. This is really helpful because when you're kind of laying down points and paths um, and trying to trace something, sometimes you might not put it in the exact right space and instead of having to go to the toolbar, click on the direct selection tool, click on your anchor point, move it, and then click back onto your pen tool, um, you can easily, while you're still in the pen tool, just hit the can control or command key and be able to alter it and then let go of that key and it'll take you directly back to the pen tool. Um, like I said before, if you make a mistake, you can always hit command Z or control Z and what that's going to do is it's going to um, take you one step back. You can actually go back even further um, as many times as you want and it can take you all the way back to your the beginning of your document. So I strongly encourage you when you're working with the pen tool, instead of if you make a mistake hitting delete or trying to get rid of the point that you just created, hit command Z because then it won't detach your cursor from the actual shape that you're creating. Okay, so when you have a closed shape, um, that's a lot easier to kind of fill with colors and do all sorts of stuff. Um, I do want to show you what it looks like if I were to, um, let's say, delete this anchor point. Um, what will happen with a open path is that um, you'll have two open anchors here and you'll also have, it'll just connect with your fill. So sometimes it can be a little bit confusing because you think, oh, I have a closed path because when I fill it, um, that shape is... Um, is filled in but if you have something like this where maybe your shape kind of crosses over each other it's always going to connect those two open points um, so it can lead to some really awkward fills and especially if you are kind of tracing a big image um, and you have lots of different colors lots of different shapes it's really important to get those closed paths all right, so we're going to switch gears a little bit here um, with this. I'm going to take that fill off and we're going to talk about these open paths. So if you have the pen tool, um, remember that I said the asterisk means it's ready to start over, so it's not connected to anything. The plus sign means it's going to add. The minus sign means it's going to subtract. Now you also have this kind of backslash symbol. And when you see that, what that means is you've come across one of those open anchor points. 
and you can click on that open anchor point and what will happen is it'll reconnect you to that particular path. So you can continue it on until you find that other open anchor point and you'll see that circle again, which means that you're going to close your shape. Um, so if you forget any of these little um, symbols that are on your <clears throat> cursor, you can always reply back to, or sorry, refer back to the resources that I provided. All right, so um, the next thing I want to talk about is our curves because um, right now we've only done straight lines. Now we've done the straight lines by just clicking, letting go of our mouse, moving our mouse, and clicking again. And that just gives us a straight line from point A to point B. So let's talk a little bit about how we create curves with the pen tool. All right, so when you want to create a curve with the pen tool, um, basically you're going to click, that's going to create your anchor point, and then the next point that you create, instead of um, just clicking and letting go, what you're going to do is you're going to click and hold down that mouse or trackpad or whatever you're using, and you're going to drag your mouse. And what happens is, um, as you drag, you're going to see these things that are called handles. Okay, these are not part of your line. They're just kind of visuals to help you um, get the right curve, make sure that your line is lined up, etc. So um, these are called handles. You drag them out. There's usually little circles on the edge here instead of the square, which represents the point. Um, and what they do is they determine your curve. Now, what you might have noticed is that when I clicked and I dragged, I actually dragged down. And what that did is it pulled a handle from the point downward, but it also pulled a handle in the opposite direction. So it's just one big line. And that handle up there actually created this curve here. Okay. And if I were to move my mouse over a little bit, what's going to happen is um, if I click again, it's going to have a second curve. Now I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard to detach my um, cursor from the line that I drew. And I'm just going to select this with the white arrow so that you can see. When I select a um, anchor point that has any type of curve attached to it, um, you're going to have these handles. And with the white arrow, I can click on that handle and I can drag it and you can see it adjusting the curve. Now this part, drawing curves with the pen tool, is a little bit more complicated. Um, it's kind of one of those things that you just have to wrap your brain around. Um, I always compare it to if you were going to drive a boat with a rudder, um, when you're actually steering, you have to move the rudder in the opposite direction of the direction that you want to go. So if you move the rudder to um, handle the rudder handle to your right, you're actually going to go left. And if you move the rudder handle to the left, you're going to go right. So it's a little bit confusing um, because when you pull out these handles, you're actually pulling out two handles and the handle on the opposite side of the direction that you're going is the one that's determining the curve that you're drawing. Okay. Um, so this just takes a little bit of muscle memory practice and you just have to keep doing it. So what I'm going to suggest is that I would like you to try um, recreating this particular curve. So I'm going to click once and this time before I click on my next point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my shift key. The shift key makes sure that um, the line stays straight. So you'll notice that I'm moving my mouse without me holding my shift key. This is what it looks like with me holding my shift key, even though I'm moving my mouse is staying in a straight line. Now, if you move your mouse a little bit too far, it will move that line in 45 degree increments. But this is a way to make sure that you're creating a straight line. So I'm going to click again with that shift held down. I'm going to let go of the shift. I'm going to move my mouse over a little bit. I'm going to, um, I can hold my mouse, or sorry, I can hold shift while I hold my mouse. And then I'm going to click and I can even keep the shift here and what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that my handles are um, perpendicular with that line that I was drawing before. If I let go of my shift, you can see I can get all sorts of angles here, but if I hold on to that shift, it's going to make sure that those handles are straight. So I'm going to hold that and then I'm going to move my mouse over a little bit further to the right. You can see I get this um, pink, uh, this is a... Um, 
oh shoot, what are these called? Uh, they are your guides. They're mm, blanket on the name. It is um, they're guides to help you line things up basically, and they have a special name, but I can't remember it right now. Um, if I go to view, I can see it. Ah, they're called smart guides. That makes sense. All right, so those smart guides will pop up. Um, this means that all my points are actually on a continuous line with each other. Um, so again, I can hold that shift key. It's gonna create another curve. I'm gonna hold the shift key again, and I'm gonna go from a straight to a curve to a straight. So I want you to try to kind of recreate this same line. I can do it again. I can even use those smart guides to kind of line up my points. Um, again, I'm holding down the shift key. Uh, if I kind of extend it the same amount, I'm gonna get that same kind of curve. Um, and I can recreate that curve over and over again. Um, the shift key is really helpful in this, okay? So go ahead, pause the video, try and recreate this. I'd like to see you do it at least three times um, to help with that muscle memory of getting it the right way. You are probably gonna struggle, that's okay. Um, just keep trying. And then once you come back, we're gonna talk about how to modify this, okay? So we're back. Um, there's a few things that I want to show you. Um, one is if we hit the Option or Alt key on our keyboard, um, what we're going to get is this less than, greater than sign. So some of you might realize that when we originally clicked on that pen tool, we saw that same symbol right here, the anchor point tool. So this is like a new tool that works really well with the anchor, or sorry, the pen tool. Um, it allows us to adjust things. So let's say we have a point, it's not quite in the right place. We use the white arrow, but then our curves aren't quite right. So we can use this tool to help adjust that. All right, so if you hold down the option key and if you click on a point that has handles, which means that it has curves, um, what happens is it actually gets rid of those handles. Um, then we can hold down the option key again. You can click on that same point and drag, and what you're going to end up with is pulling out new handles. So basically this allows us to adjust the handles. Um, something else that's important to note is that if I were to select my white arrow and adjust this handle, you'll notice that I can only adjust these handles simultaneously. As I drag them, um, the handles adjust. I mean, I can do it with both of these. The handles adjust together, okay? Now, if I wanted just this handle adjusted, I could hold that Option or Alt key, click on just that handle, and instead of um, changing the um, handles simultaneously, it actually changes them individually. So if I wanted to kind of cross over this or something like that, um, I could do that. So it allows us to, number one, get rid of our handles completely. Number two, draw new handles from a um, point that might not have handles already. And number three, it allows us to adjust handles um, individually of one another. Okay, so that's the anchor point tool. It does a few other things too that we're going to talk about later. Okay, so hopefully you did three versions of this and played a little bit with the anchor point tool. Um, now what I want to show you is a couple ways to um, kind of work with just one handle. So if we kind of start the same way we did before, click and click, that's creating that straight line. Then we move our mouse a little bit further over. We're going to click again and we're going to drag up. Now let's say that instead of going from this curve to another curve, um, I just want to go back to a straight line. So one way I can do that is by clicking on the anchor point that I just made. And what will happen is that lower um, handle will disappear. So I'm going to just do that again to show you. So I've created my curve already. If I move my mouse over, you can see that predictive curve that's coming up. But if I click on it, that bottom anchor point disappears and it actually allows me to go to another straight line. So again, um, I can do that either direction. So 
up until now I've been kind of clicking and dragging down, but if I were to drag up instead, that would reverse the direction of my curve and then I could click on that same anchor point and click again and it would go from a curve to a straight line. All right. The next thing I want to show you is going from a straight line to a curve. So again, um, I'm going to click on a straight line. I'm going to click again. So notice I didn't hold it down this time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that same anchor point and drag out. And what that does is it drags out an anchor point. Um, and allows me to go from a straight line to a curve. So it's kind of the opposite of this. So you can click on a point that you created and it will create that curve, or sorry, get rid of that second, whoops, um, that second curve, or you can click on an anchor point that you already created, drag out a curve and, um, create that handle. So let me just show you one more time because if I do, whoops, I'm going to make this straight by holding on the shift key. If I do decide to create a handle and then I click on it, notice that when I roll over that point that I created handles on, there is that less than greater than sign. That's the anchor point tool. So my cursor right now is telling me that if I click on that, it's kind of like clicking on it with the anchor point tool, which I could also do. I could click on it with the anchor point tool um, and I would get the same effect that I just got. Okay. So um, this is important. There's also other ways to do it. Um, so what I just did is that even though it looked the same, I actually held down the alt or option key, which cues up that anchor point tool and allows me to click on it. Um, the other option is, um, let's say I connect here, I click like this. Um, I also can take this handle, I can hold option, I can drag it up to the point and that gets rid of it. Or I could also um, drag it in line with my line and what that'll do is it'll kind of change which direction the curve's going, or if I keep going in that same um, parallel line, it will connect me just in that straight line, okay? So those are um, some of the different variations um, that you can do. And I just wanna show you um, a great way to kind of practice, just like when you maybe were learning how to write, um, I created these workshops. That's not true. Someone else created them and I modified them a little bit. But um, basically, you're going to just click and do the same line over and over again. The first ones allow you to kind of just work on that straight line technique, which is pretty easy. Um, in this situation, you can't really hold the shift key. Remember that you hit return and that will disconnect you from the line. And here it's showing you which direction to um, drag that in. Again, holding the shift key, um, going down to this point, holding the shift key. And what that's going to do is it's going to kind of give me this curve. And that repetition helps with that muscle, uh, muscle memory. Um, there's also things here that you can kind of create these shapes. Ah, uh, yes, I want to show you the circle. So um, if you remember, I'm going to select all this and get rid of it. Um, if you remember, we talked about uh, how the anchor point tool can help you to um, get rid of curves. So if I were to take an ellipse here, um, this is a perfect circle because I held down my shift key and I'm just going to make sure my pen tool is selected. I'm going to hold down that option key. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on each one of these anchors that makes up this circle. And when I do that, what happens is I end up with a square. Okay, so that's a way to even modify my shape. I could just kind of do one. I've got like a baseball diamond now. Um, and then there's all sorts of things that you can do um, with that. The last thing I'm going to show you um, before I kind of uh, 
give you a little bit. I'm actually going to show you um, how to trace something. Um, so I'm going to just place a document in here. Um, I'm pretty sure I have a visual of, I'm going to just use this unicorn. Um, and let's say, you know, I grab this off the internet. I want the shape of the unicorn. Maybe I'm going to make a few modifications, but I want to have this silhouette. So maybe I can put it over top of my own watercolors or um, something else. And basically, um, it's really better that when you're tracing something that you zoom in on it because it gives you a lot more control. Some of the things that I suggest is um, command or control plus will zoom in, command or control minus will zoom out. And if you hit command or control zero, um, what that's gonna do is it's gonna bring your whole artboard back into the center of your screen. Um, for right now, I'm just gonna zoom in. And then also you have the hand tool which you'll see over here on the toolbar, but again, I find the key command is much easier to access it. So if you press the space bar, this allows you to drag your screen around without editing anything on the screen. So if I'm working, let's say I'm working on the face here, and then I need to move down a little bit, even if I'm still working in the pen tool, this allows me to make that change. So um, just real quick, like this, allows me to kind of make these um, curves. And again, this takes practice to kind of get things the way that you want them. Um, but as you go through and you trace, the more you do this, the better you're gonna get at it. Um, and so I'm gonna just kind of do a little bit of a sloppy job here on the leg. Um, and I'm just doing straight lines. Um, and I don't encourage this. I want you guys to get good at um, using the pen tool without um, kind of doing, whoops, uh, sloppy lines. So I just tried to click on that um, and I missed it. So I just hit Command Z to go back because I was trying to get rid of the curve that was already created. Same thing here um, because I want to go from a curve to like a straight line. All right, so um, I'm going to just hit enter. And uh, I'm going to put a stroke on this so you guys can see it a little bit better. We'll just put a black stroke on it. Um, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Now, well, that's a little too big. Um, I did do like a not so great job of this on purpose because what I wanted to show you is this curvature tool. So the curvature tool looks very similar to the pen tool. Um, you can't, so you can draw with this tool. However, this tool basically um, primarily focuses on creating curves. So it's going to be difficult to trace something like this with a lot of precision if everything's kind of curvy. Um, we don't want everything to be curvy, but if you do have a space like this where you're like, oh, that was supposed to be curvier, um, what the curvature tool allows you to do is kind of select that area um, and find it what you need and kind of um, drag it. So it kind of like allows you to adjust curves and uh, if you move it, it'll uh, move the curve um, kind of perfectly. It'll make it very smooth and perfect. Um, I shouldn't use the word perfect, but you get what I mean. There's a lot more um, smoothness to it. So it doesn't give you those like harsh kind of jagged edges. But now you can see that right now after using this curvature tool, I'm getting like a little bit too much softness in the hoof um, or in the leg. And so probably right here, I wouldn't necessarily want as much curve. Now what I'm doing is you might hear me double clicking. Um, if you double click on a point, it will either get rid of or add a curve. So um, sort of like those handles that we had. Um, so you can see now it comes from like a curve to a corner because I double clicked on it. If I double click again, it's going to create that curve that it feels like it deserves. All right. So I'm just really going to quickly kind of move away from this unicorn. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then zoom back in and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select that curvature tool just so you can see, whoops, um, 
got to deselect first. So um, if you have a path selected, um, the curvature tool will edit that particular path. If you don't have anything selected, um, just like the pen tool, you're going to see that asterisk, which means that it's ready to kind of create a shape. So when I click and I click again, um, it'll look like it's doing a straight line, but then as soon as I click again, it starts to create that curve. And you can see that if you want to make organic shapes, and I'm just clicking and dragging, I'm not doing anything, it's going to create those really organic shapes for you. However, if you want to have something that's more detailed, which most things that are detailed have both a combination of organic and straight paths, um, this tool is better for helping you to edit those and to make things smoother rather than to actually draw them. Okay, so it's important to learn the pen tool and use that first and then use this to kind of make modifications. So the things that you're going to use to make modifications to your line to refine them is the white arrow, the anchor point tool, and the curvature tool. But primarily you're going to be working with the actual pen tool um, when you're tracing something. All right, I hope that all this is helpful. And if you have any questions, you can always ask. And um, that's all for now. All right, thanks.